Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops Cold War In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the AK-47 Assault Rifle, which is always a joy for me to review. It's a weapon that I've shot a lot of different versions of in real life, and every year, every Call of Duty developer has a different way to bring this AK-47 fantasy to life, so I can't wait to see what they're going to do next. The AK-47 might just be the best assault rifle in Black Ops Cold War, and it's one of the best Call of Duty AKs in a very long time. It's an excellent weapon, which is why the thumbnail had the best rifle question mark, but the weapon does have some drawbacks. It isn't just perfection incarnate. It does have some downsides that we're going to talk about. However, one of the cool things we're doing in today's episode is I'm going to have three totally unique creator classes, so stick around for that. We're going to be doing some really goofy things with attachments on the AK-47 that you don't normally see. But first, let's hear from today's sponsor. Which is Raid Shadow Legends, and I know you've probably heard this before if you've watched any gaming YouTube video ever in the last couple of months and I've put whoa um I kind of look like a baby in this uh I, I guess <laughs> 2020 hasn't really settled in yet because this was December 2019 I have more color in my hair after only a year the the bags under my eyes are less stressed I'm not squinting as much I generally look like a happier healthier person here I'm even still wearing my wedding ring which I no longer do in this video yikes it's it's been a long 2020 this off for a long time, but before the sponsorship, I decided to install and play Raid Shadow Legends. That's the biggest time sink I've committed to in a long time. I thought I was playing a lot of Call of Duty, but over the last year or so, I've probably played over a thousand hours of Raid Shadow Legends. I've sunk a ridiculous amount of time into this, so it's really cute to see these like old initial champions down here that I've long since ground up for more powerful ones. Many moons later, I am currently hoarding ancient shards in the portal, which is where you summon your champion, so that when double summoning day or maybe demon spawn day comes, I'm gonna go hard and just cash in everything and try and get the demon spawn champions I want. And I need to do that because they added the Doom Tower to the game, just added about a month or so ago, and it does live up to its name. I'm reading Tower of God right now, the manga, and it just, it's basically like playing through it. Each floor is brutal, but the challenges are rewarding, and I'm trying to crawl my way up to the top, but I have to get stronger before I do that. If you sign up for Raid Shadow Legends using the link below, you can get the new free champion Bulwark, who's very good for the Doom Tower and an absolute monster for the clan boss. If you want to get a head start in Raid, all you have to do is sign up with the link in the description. You're going to get a free Void Champion, an XP booster, 50 gems, energy refills, and even an Ancient Shard to help you on your way. After you complete the tutorial, you'll find everything in the upper right-hand corner up there in the little treasure chest box. I'm showing you how to open it and pick up some other items I had in there, but your champion, all your goodies will be in there. Well, what are you waiting for? Download Raid Shadow Legends today and join me on my epic thousand hour journey to be the best in this game. Raid Shadow Legends has been a great sponsor of mine for about a year and a half now, so I hope you check them out. But for this point forward, we're back to Call of Duty land only. The AK-47 bullet velocity is 490 meters per second, which is the slowest of all assault rifles. It's not the slowest by a lot, but it's still technically the slowest, and it's slower than what I would really want in my long-range weapons. For comparison, the AK-74U actually has better bullet velocity than this. So in my opinion, bullet velocity boosting barrels will always be worth your attachment slot on the AK-47, because I prefer to treat this weapon like a hit scan and less so like I'm flinging projectiles at people. The maximum damage range is 38 meters, which is very good in general. It's longer than the majority of your engagements are going to be in Black Ops Cold War, but it's not particularly particularly special for assault rifles. There are a couple of different assault rifles in this game that can go up to 50 meters. So it's not insane, it's not crazy, but it's still really good, especially considering that some of the barrels will increase this. The AK-47's base damage is 38 up close, decreasing down to 30 at that 38 meters we just talked about. But there's a pretty big difference over range. If you equip the RPK barrel, that's 42 damage per shot and decreasing down to 33 at long ranges, which can change your headshots, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But with the base barrel, the AK-47 will kill in either four or five sh body shots, depending on how far away you are from the enemy but it's still four shots to kill with headshots. So even getting four headshots in a row with the AK-47 is not any better than shooting people on the body, 
which is a little bit disappointing, especially since the headshots on this weapon got nerfed. I think they were just too easy to do, and it was just too easy to reduce your time to kill. But at the very least, it's consistent. So I just go for body shots and don't fool a whole lot with headshots. However, if you're running the RPK barrel, the extra little bit of damage and your headshot multiplier is just enough to get you above that 50 damage threshold so that it can go from four shots to kill down to three shots to kill and significantly lower your time to kill. So if you're doing headshot challenges or you're really confident in your aim and accuracy, you can run with the RPK barrel. I generally do not prefer this barrel because of the recoil penalties. It has penalties to both your vertical and especially the horizontal recoil that make me not want to use it very much. I would prefer my accuracy rifle type AK-47, which is a very goofy thing to say in general. And uh, headshots are 1.3x. Most of the weapons in this game are 1.4, but a couple of the assault rifles got nerfed down to 1.3, 1.2, and a few other numbers that we'll be talking about in later episodes. The AK-47 fires at 600 rounds per minute, which is the slowest in the assault rifle class by a pretty good margin. There really aren't any assault rifles that come very close to firing this slowly, so it's not a bullet hose weapon. And the downside of this is that if you start missing shots, the penalty for missing them or the forgiveness is gonna be a lot worse than it will be on weapons that have very high rates of fire. So make sure to hit your shots. However, all of this considered, rate of fire, damage barrels, and blah, 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 the AK-47 body shot time to kill is 300 milliseconds, which makes it the fastest killing assault rifle in Black Ops Cold War and it's very fast in general. If you guys know me, you know that I like unique weapons that have really standout attributes, and in this case, its most important attribute is that it's just the fastest killing assault rifle, which is pretty much always going to be good no matter what else you do to the weapon, but the other good thing is that the recoil is stupidly low on the AK-47, so not only does it kill very quickly, but it's very low recoil. Sometimes it can even have zero or a pre-patched negative recoil with the right attachments where it kicks downward. There's a lot of weapons in this game that you can kit to be a laser in Black Ops Cold War to kick very little because there's a lot of different recoil reducing attachments, but for the AK-47, it doesn't get much more lasery than this. But I would add a little asterisk. I would say that the vertical recoil is the lowest by far, but it still does have some minor side-to-side -side wobble and not a predictable side. It'll go to one side or the other somewhat unpredictably. You can't really control it. You can really only fight the almost non-existent vertical recoil. So from like a college lab tech standpoint, the overall accuracy is the best. Your shots will hit closest to the target that you aim for more than any other assault rifle, but it is perhaps not the most precise assault rifles. There are assault rifles that kick more, but kick more predictably. But don't overthink that too lot. It is overall very low recoil and easy to control. Oddly, on this weapon, I had no issues with visual shake, smoke, or muzzle flash, which are very common things that developers like to bog down AK-47s with in Call of Duty. This one performed really well. Similarly, I thought the iron sights were tiny, and I usually would not like these type of iron sights, but subjectively speaking, they worked fine for me. My experiences, my feels with them were that they were adequate, they were fine, and I had no issues using the iron sights, even though I thought that I would hate them. We're going to blow through the handling stats really quickly and then move toward the section of unique classes. AK-47 aim down sights time is 300 milliseconds and sprint out time is 350 milliseconds. That All of these are perfectly average for assault rifles and really even SMGs, nothing exceptional going on there. The AK-47 hipfire, 7.5 milliradians, again, perfectly normal and average for assault rifles. The base reload time is a little bit slower at 2.6 seconds. Not crazy slow, not that you'd probably notice it, but it is on the slower end of things for assault rifles. But it doesn't matter a whole lot to me since the weapon has less shots to kill with for than other assault rifles. I'm not always needing giant magazines or even magazine attachments in general. I'm allowed to conserve my ammo much more easily instead of just spamming at people. So now it's time for opinions before we move into the suggested classes. In my opinion, the AK-47 is an excellent weapon to use in Black Ops Cold War, and it kills fast enough to work well up close. If people rush you, if they get up in your face, the time to kill is there for you to be competitive with submachine guns, and that's a very nice versatility element to have. 
and it has low enough recoil to be useful at long ranges while still maintaining a good time to kill over that range. Between the two, the AK-47 is definitely going to be a better long range weapon than up close. You're not going to beat the Diamantes and shotguns, and it's going to be harder to beat the SMGs. Your strength is really going to be long range peppering people and hammering them into the ground, really treating this more like a light machine gun and less like a true assault rifle. Perhaps it would be easier to think of it as the lightest light machine gun. However, the weapon does struggle with two things. Number one is bullet velocity, and number two is precision. The bullet velocity on this weapon just is not there to keep up with light machine guns or tactical rifles or even most of the other assault rifles. You will find yourself leading more shots than you would like to if you're going for ultra long range kills, like I have been doing in a lot of this gameplay. And the precision element of it in that the recoil can kick left or right isn't exactly perfect to say the least, and it's why a lot of people are actually going toward the Krig because that weapon is incredibly precise, even though the overall recoil is higher than the AK-47, so you may miss a few shots on accident due to that. Personally, though, I do think the AK-47 is the best assault rifle. We still haven't reviewed the Krig yet, which is very strong. That's upcoming. But I do think that the AK-47 is very strong. I would probably dub it the best assault rifle. And if I knew that I were going into a lobby against a bunch of MLG sweaty tryhards led by marksmen playing Search and Destroy, I would probably be using the AK-47 instead of most of the other weapons in this game. The first of three classes that I want to recommend to you today is what I would call my mobility AK-47. Since the base recoil is very low and the handling stats are pretty good and the time to kill is good, I thought I would make this weapon about as fast and as mobile as I could make it and turn it into something uh, more of an alternative SMG or perhaps good enough to be an SMG up close and good enough to be an assault rifle at long ranges. I put on the muzzle brake 7.62 attachment just to reduce the vertical recoil by a little bit with actually no downsides and that's the most important one because you don't want really any handling penalties. I put on the 15.5 inch ultra light barrel, which doesn't do anything but give me additional strafe speed, but you will need that because that's more like Stalker Pro. Then instead of a recoil reducing grip, we're going to be going with the bruiser grip, which gives us a whole variety of bonuses to our movement and walking and sprinting speeds, all very, very helpful. I do run the GRU elastic wrap, which hurts my uh, sprint to fire time, which I kind of don't want to do on this weapon, but the huge bonus to ADS time, the flinch resistance, and especially the ability to drop shot while mobile is very, very important on this mobility AK class. And then finally, I'm going to run the GB, KGB skeletal stock, which gives me a huge bonus to my aim walking movement speed, which is basically my sprint, my strafing speed so I can ADS and check corners and my sprint to fire time. The downside to this build is that my hip fire is kind of doo-doo butter, but I am able to rush around very accurately, snap onto targets quickly, strafe around corners, and still have good enough recoil to be effective at long ranges when I need to be. I don't think that this is the optimal way to run the AK-47, but it's definitely a fun way to run the AK-47, and maybe the best way to run it on some very small maps like the strike maps. Next up is what I would call the classic Call of Duty AK build. For the longest time, the AK has just performed excellently in Call of Duty with a suppressor, and Black Ops Cold War is not too big of an exception to that. I do struggle with suppressors in general, but found that this class works okay. I run the GRU suppressor, which is a bold gambit in my opinion. It keeps me off the radar, keeps my vertical recoil down by quite a bit, though I do take a huge penalty to my effective damage range and bullet velocity. Those are kind of rough to me. I don't really like those penalties, but I use this class mostly on smaller maps and mostly not for long range engagements, so it's okay by me. I'm going to be running the Ember Sighting Point attachment so that I can see people through bushes and smoke and stuff, which is very important because everybody's throwing smoke grenades now and helps you out on Cartel. The Spetsnaz Grip to reduce the recoil, even though I don't really like the shooting move speed penalty at 26%. The rest of the grip just helps me tremendously with the recoil. Then I'm going to be running the VDV 50 round fast mags, which hurt ADS time a fair bit, but gives me a lot of ammo to spray with. And you best believe, since I have a suppressor on this weapon, I'm going to be spraying a lot. Then finally, the GRU elastic wrap for the same reasons we mentioned earlier. It'll make the ADS a lot snappier. And this gets you kind of that classic suppressed AK-47 feel, with the only major drawback being that it doesn't work that well at super long ranges, which I guess is in line with the classic AK feel, because even suppressed, it isn't going to work very well at long ranges because you lose some of that damage over range. I think this is a really good close and medium range class. Like, this is going to work on a lot of your 6v6 maps, but not all of them. 
Now I'm going to recommend my best AK-47 class, which isn't as creative as the others, but it's the one that you're going to see the most often, and it's the one that will perform best. It's an 8-attachment gunfighter class that is designed primarily for just long-range combat. You're going to want to run optics on the weapon of some kind. I personally like the Microflex LED, but the Susat Multi-Zoom, the 2X, the 3X are all very good, just kind of depending on what you want, but the Microflex is going to work best for me. Then you want to run the KGB Eliminator Muzzle Attachment to reduce your vertical recoil tremendously, and it'll help you keep off the radar just a little bit. When it comes to barrels, there's a lot of different choices. The VDV, Liberator, and Takedown are all good choices. Between all of them, I kind of like the Liberator barrel for the bullet velocity, but the VDV does almost as good of a job while boosting range, and the Takedown barrel does crazy things for my range, but I'm not such a big fan of having to kind of fling my shots at people like they're rocks at long ranges, so I'd probably say pick VDV or Liberator depending on your personal preferences to boost that bullet velocity. Ember sighting point again so that you can reveal people at long ranges through smoke in the bushes, and it just helps your hipfire accuracy a little bit, especially because we're going to be murdering that later in this build. Then I run the Spetsnaz grip, not very creative, huge shooting, spoop, shooting move speed penalty, but it will fix my vertical horizontal recoil problem and even further lower my vertical recoil down to like nothing. Interestingly for the magazine on this one, I like the GRU mag clamp instead of the VDV 50 round fast mag because the aim down sights time is smaller and since this is my accuracy precision weapon, I'm not missing as many shots. I can kill plenty of people in one mag and then reload it very, very quickly while still having a little bit of additional ammo in my reserve. Uh, I just, I don't like the ADS time penalty because I'm going to be snap aiming people with this one. The GRU elastic wrap works great for this. Less, friend, less flinch, faster ADS time. I can drop shot as needed, which is great. I do take a little hit to sprint to fire time, but we will fix that with the skeletal stock. Now the skeletal stock is an attachment I've been enjoying a lot lately. It helps your sprint to fire time, which is very good. But most importantly on this weapon is the aim walking movement speed. Since this is my accuracy rifle, I'm going to be behind cover, aim down sights, and I want to be able to aim and strafe very quickly with it and this is just the the way to go uh, the hip fire penalty isn't great but the ember sighting point will effectively cancel it out and this is not the most creative class in the world but it works excellently on this low recoil weapon and it's one that you've probably seen me get the majority of gameplay with here today and it's just a glorious glorious laser beam i want you all to have fun with it Guys, that is all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.